Hope you had a wonderful festive holiday season, spent a nice Christmas with your family and had a good start into the new year. Well, we don't need this anymore now. Guys, I'm back. Yeah, for some reason, the family wanted to see me in person over the Christmas holidays. I know that's totally weird, right? Apparently, they were sick at looking at only a photo of me. So I had no other chance to take a week off. No off quick garage, no videos, no editing, nothing. But it was good. We had a very nice family time together here on the property. Had some really good fun in the pool, played table tennis, drank a lot. Well, not too much though. And enjoyed some quality family time together. It was really good. Yeah, and I was also able to drive my own electric boat, which was a birthday present from my wife. So we took the whole family, went down to the Gold Coast and had a fun day out on the water with an electric boat. Yeah, because you didn't need any license or something, it was very slow, but it was powered by a 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery and the display on the motor gave me all the data and specs I was interested in. So you can watch all these videos on my German channel Living Down Under, which is always linked down in the description as well. And yes, it comes with English subtitles as well. The automatic translation is not 100%, but you get the point. So I had actually prepared the last two videos already before Christmas to, f to, um, to fill up this gap when I didn't have time to make videos. But I didn't even have time to edit them. So I was really off-grid from the off-grid garage. But now guys, I'm back. We are super up to date, the 4th of January 2024. Can you believe it? We've got 2024. Well, I wish you all a very happy new year with lots of health and hopefully all your wishes will come true. This year will be very exciting for the off grid Garage and for you as well because we've got heaps of projects coming up. Yeah, do-it-yourself projects. Heaps. I think we have reviewed most of the batteries and products out there now. At least the ones I'm interested in. So, and as I said in my last video, I want to show you another little quirk with my battery shelf here, which we have observed for a while now. But first of all, guys, welcome back to the off grid garage in sunny, hot Australia. We've got between 50 and 250 amps outside today, depending on the cloud situation. But it looks like it's getting sunnier and sunnier this afternoon. So we will have fully charged the battery very soon. And this is exactly what we need because I want to show you what's going on with the battery shelf. Yeah, and here is the good old battery shelf we have built. Holy shit. That was in 2022. That's two years old now. January 22. This is two years old now. We have built this beautiful battery shelf here two years ago crazy all right if you are new to the channel and haven't watched all the old videos this is a 44 kilowatt hour battery consisting of three different battery banks it's a 304 ampere hour battery a 280 ampere hour battery and another 280 ampere hour battery we've got also three different bms's here on the shelf this is a 200 amp heltec bms a 200 amp jk bms and a 100 amp overkill BMS. The battery in the top and in the bottom are installed by using the standard bus bars which came with the battery cells. The battery in the middle shelf has got aluminium bus bars from Powerpol here in Australia. Now you would say, why would you use aluminium? Aluminium has a higher resistance than copper, causes all kind of oxidation and trouble. And you are probably right, but it is not the case. Because these aluminium bus bars are thicker than the standard one, they actually have a lower resistant than the copper bus bars which come with the cells. We have done all the testing and calculation. I'll link some of the videos down below in the description. And I think Powerpol still sells these bus bars here in Australia, but doesn't ship anymore worldwide. So these BMSs have no communication at all whatsoever. They are standalone BMSs. They just watch the bank they are connected to measure the temperature inside the battery and also in the main breaker and then turn off the battery bank if there is an over voltage, an under voltage, an over current or an over temperature situation. And so far this battery shelf has given me no grief at all. It was always perfectly running, no trouble at all. But when we fully charge these battery banks we could observe that 
the battery in the middle shelf is actually charging slower or I should say it's charging longer than the other two battery banks. And the feed from the MPPT solar charge controllers and also from the Multi Plus is coming from the top to a to a 650 amp copper bus bar system and this is where the battery banks are connected to. So you would expect if we charge and discharge from the top this battery here has the lowest resistance to your load and also to the solar chargers. So this one will charge a bit faster than this one and also these two will charge faster than the bottom one because this one is the last in a row and has therefore the highest resistance. Even this massive copper bus bar in the back has probably not much resistance. There is a tiny tiny bit and we will have a tiny voltage drop from the top shelf to the bottom shelf, right? And this could cause your battery banks charging differently. So it is actually recommended if you have parallel batteries to connect the positive at the top and the negative at the bottom of your bus bar so you have a more equal charge and discharge of all your battery banks. But because this is such a massive copper bus bar, I didn't bother. I didn't care when we paralleled all these batteries together here. They were all daisy chained from one battery to the next one and the supply only connected to one side of this whole string. And there was no problem. So we have just reached 90% state of charge here and uh, charging with 242 amps into this battery. So let's have a look at the single BMSs of this battery shelf here and see how these individual battery banks and BMSs charge. So here you can see all three BMSs and how they charge at the moment. On the left we have the Heltec BMS in the top battery shelf and we are charging with around 75 amps. The current measurement of the Heltec BMS is not accurate. It is actually showing a bit less than we actually have. In the middle we have got the JK BMS charging with 77 amps into this battery bank and here at the bottom we've got the overkill BMS. So depending on the cloud situation current will go up and down but you have all three currents here in one view. So now the sun is coming back, we're ramping up and we can see that the current going into the JK BMS is actually not higher than for all the other battery banks, right? It is fairly equal. We are now charging with more than 200 amps into the whole system and we've got 77 amps into the JK and also in the overkill BMS and around 75 in the top shelf where the 304 amp per hour battery is connected to. So you can see it is fairly equal. Sun is coming back and you can see it is fairly equal. It is not like the middle shelf battery and the JK BMS are charging slower than the other two banks. So you can see, uh, well, there's nothing to see, right? They're all charging the same way. If there are clouds outside, everything goes down. If the sun is coming out, everything goes up again. And we cannot really see a difference. It is a few amps difference depending how fast the app updates as well. But from here, nothing to see. Okay, uh, let me get back to you once we reach the 55.2 volts. So we can now see under full sunshine that the battery in the bottom shelf with the overkill BMS is only taking 22 amps while the JK in the middle shelf still pulls 77 amps and the Heltec in the top shelf with the 304 amp per hour battery is at around 48 amps. And we have observed exactly that for quite a while now that the JK in the middle shelf is pulling a lot more amps at the end when we reach the 55 or 55.2 volts. It's pulling a lot more current than the other two battery banks. So we now even have the situation that the overkill battery in the bottom shelf is discharging with negative one amps while the JK is still pulling 50 amps from the solar and the Heltec at the top is at around 20 amps now charging. So obviously the battery in the bottom shelf is already absorbed at this voltage while the JK in the middle shelf and the Heltec in the top shelf are not. They still take energy. So now the sun is coming back full power. 77 amps in the JK and only 20 amps in the overkill and about 40 amps into the Heltec at the top. And have a look at the overkill at the bottom shelf, how it tapers off already. So this battery is obviously fully absorbed already at 55.2 volts. The Heltec is going down as well, slowly. So it is absorbing. 
but the JK in the middle shelf is still taking over 70 amps. So we are still charging with around 80 amps into all three battery banks, but the majority of this current goes into the JK BMS, 4 amps, uh, around 14 amps, and over 60 amps still. Huh? Isn't that weird? And we had already all kind of speculations in the comment section under my videos about why this is happening. So eventually, as you will see um, in a minute, the JKBMS in the middle shelf will also come down, fully absorbs at this voltage, and then there's pretty much no current going into this whole battery shelf anymore. So again, this is not an issue. This is not causing any problems. It is only what we have observed when we fully charge the battery shelf. And the question is, why is this happening? Why is the JK in the middle pulling more amps than the other two when we fully charge? So, and here I made this beautiful drawing on my whiteboard showing the battery shelf with all three battery banks and the BMSs. And now people have speculated and said, well, this battery has, has aluminum bus bars. There might be a corrosion between the battery terminal and the actual bus bar, which increases the overall resistance of this whole battery bank. And therefore it charges slower. Okay, this is what um, people said. I mean, not, not the 5 and 10 ohms, this is just for this is just for easy explanation now. So, speculation 1. The middle shelf battery with the JK BMS has a higher resistance than the other two battery banks. When we charge this whole battery shelf now, most of the current would go into this battery and this battery, and less would go into this battery bank. That will also mean the battery in the top and in the bottom would take more ampere hours over time. So they actually have a higher state of charge already than the middle shelf battery. And when we reach the 55.2 volts, these two batteries are already at 100% state of charge, while this one is maybe at only 95% state of charge. So what happens during discharging then? Well, the majority of the power comes from the top and from the bottom battery and less energy or power comes from the middle battery because the resistance is higher in this battery shelf. So I should actually see this in my BMSs when I control them, but I couldn't. Even when I pull five or six kilowatt from this system here, so discharging the battery with around 100, 110, 120 amps, the distribution of the current is fairly equal across the three battery banks. So what about if it is the other way around. If our middle shelf battery has a lower resistance than the other two battery banks. And this is maybe what we see right now. The middle shelf battery takes all the power while the other two battery banks do not because the resistance is higher. And when discharging, more energy should come from this middle shelf battery due to the lower internal resistance than from the other two battery banks. But as I just said, I cannot observe this either. The current of each individual battery bank is pretty much the same. So we are still charging here with about three amps into the top shelf battery and one amp in the bottom shelf battery and 20 amps into the middle shelf JK. So is this caused by a low resistance or a high resistance? And as I told you before, the aluminium bus bars have a lower resistance than the copper bus bars due to the size. Okay, to find out, there's only one way. We have to measure the internal resistance of each of this battery bank, including the BMS, and see what is going on. So we have now exposed all three battery banks here, and we want to measure the internal resistance of each battery bank. And I'll measure the resistance on the output of the main circuit breaker. So we will turn this one off to isolate the top battery from the system. And then I measure across the positive and negative here of the main circuit breaker. So we are measuring across the connections, the BMS, all the cables, the terminal block, all the bus bars, the battery cells themselves, internal resistance all together. Everything. Yeah, I just thought, now I cannot include the main circuit breaker because this would mean I need to turn off everything. I would need to isolate the whole battery. 
then everything shuts down. Okay, let's start with this first and see what results we get. Top shelf first. Okay, I'm putting the camera sideways. So to be precise here, we are not measuring the internal resistance, we are measuring the internal impedance of the system because the um, resistance tester here uses a one kilohertz signal. Negative there, a bit of spark. 9.1 milliohms across the whole battery. Okay, I'm now measuring the bottom shelf. So we're isolating and I do the same. Positive, negative directly at the breaker. There we go. 10.4, 10.5, let's say 10.4 milliohms. Okay, I have now turned on the other battery banks and isolated the middle shelf battery with the JK BMS. And this is exactly what we are measuring right now. What do you expect? Higher, lower than the other ones? The same? I don't know. I really don't know. I think it's, I think it's lower due to the aluminium bus bars. Okay, 11, uh, 10.8, 10.9, 11, 10.8 I would say. All right, there you have our result. Guys, this result, I'm surprised. It does not make sense to me. I don't know, this is very hard to understand for me. I don't have any explanation. And as always in these situations, I'm asking the community, what is your opinion? Why is the middle shelf charging faster with having these results now? So to me, it looks like the middle shelf battery is not as full as the other two batteries at 55.2 volts and therefore takes more time to absorb. But why is that? It's a JK BMS. It has an active balancer while the other two BMSs have a passive balancing system. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. We have to swap the batteries around again and see if this behavior sticks with the BMS or sticks with the battery bank. What do you think? Because with the installation of the, yeah, here it is. With the installation of the last Peter board in my battery shelf here, that's the third one, I have to replace the Heltec BMS anyway in the next video. We do this in the next video. Heltec goes, something new comes. Very special BMS. I'm very keen to test this one out. Yeah, I was really expecting or hoping for a different result here that we can see a far lower or far higher impedance or resistance with this middle shelf battery. But it's not. It's in line with the other two. There's not much difference. So let's start the speculation. Leave your comments down below. What do you think? Why that is? As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support here, especially during the festive season now. Lots of donations came in. This is exactly what keeps the channel running and me as well. So thank you very much for everyone who has donated and keeping the show going here. And until the next video, guys, when we do the battery swap here, well, there's one video coming before, which is a very important one about the JK BMS. Well, until then, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. Yeah, how weird is that?